Hi, in this uh, presentation, I'm going to cover presenting the problem. This is from chapter three in our textbook, and I'll have two parts to our lecture. So objectives for part one of this lecture is to discuss how to write your introduction and how to write purpose statements. Then I'll also go over uh, variables and what they mean and all the different types of variables. Then at the end of this um, lecture I'll provide an example of a purpose statement with the different things that need to be uh, or the different variables that are involved there. As a reminder I like to go over the steps of research and last week we talked about steps one and two which are identifying the research problem and you have provided the, your research topic and now that you have your research topic what you need to do now is start your literature review and you need to start that now uh, it does take quite a while to do a literature review uh, even for this class doing a literature review for the assignment still takes quite a bit of time to do to find good quality research. If a individual was actually doing a study uh, from the literature review and gathering all the literature they can on that particular topic, they would develop a hypothesis. And I'll define the different types of hypotheses uh, in part two of this lecture. From your hypothesis, you uh, develop a purpose statement, which is step four. And we'll talk about that in just a bit in part one. Then you would develop de definitions, delimitations, limitations, and assumptions. And I'll talk about that in part two of this uh, lecture. In uh, all papers, we always have a introduction. Um, in a research uh, journal article you'll see that uh, there is an introduction and if you look at a thesis or a doctoral dissertation there is also an introduction so we always want to uh, introduce the topic to the reader what the introduction is it's typically a miniature literature review um, what it does, it provides the overview and the main conclusions of the literature that you have uh, read to give the reader some understanding and background uh, on the material. We do, don't want to assume that the reader has 100% uh, understanding of the topic. You have to assume that they have some general understanding of the topic, but... Um, you may need to fill in some gaps for the reader. Uh, that's one of the things when I read students' papers and read their introduction. Uh, students typically uh, make a huge gap or they forget a huge piece of information that they assumed the reader actually understands about a topic. Don't make that assumption. Uh, Pretend you're writing your introduction to somebody who has some basic understanding of the topic, but doesn't have a really broad and depth understanding of the material. Uh, we will typically write the introduction after you've developed your purpose statement, research question, and hypotheses, uh, which again, I'm gonna talk about in just a bit. Uh, you need to tell the reader why this issue is even all that important here in, in, in the introduction. Why should um, this study be done? Are there missing or limited evidence in the research or missing gaps in the research? You need to uh, tell them that there's missing gaps. Explain that to them. You need to justify the reason for doing the actual study. Now, Thomas, Nelson, and Silverman, I, you know, our, our textbook authors, I, do an excellent job uh, overall in this textbook. I've read quite a few research methods textbooks, and in my opinion, they are 
do a really excellent job of explaining a lot of different things and uh, in the introduction portion of chapter three they do an excellent job uh, they identify three features of a good introduction and if you write your introduction for the assignment this way I think you'll do an excellent job they say give a general introduction uh, then you provide background information then there's the lead-in information again I'm not just going to spend too much time on this because you can read the textbook on your own the general introduction again is the general background and then the background information is beginning to become more and more specific from the research um, and then by the time you get to the lead in the reader should be able to guess what the purpose of the study is going to be all, all about um, so you should be able the reader should be able to just follow along and get to the point at lead in so oh, I know what's going to happen here I know what the study is all about and that leads us to the purpose of problem statement what a purpose or problem statement about is it's the focus or the direction for the study it gives the researcher uh, very specific directions on where they're supposed to where they are going or went with a study and there are some qualities of a good purpose or problem statement that um, we want to use because you are going to be writing purpose statements in this class um, for the next couple weeks you'll be doing this quite a bit you'll be identifying purpose or problem statements because um, it, it does take some time to get used to writing purpose and problem statements uh, the qualities are it's the purpose statement suggests an association between variables association is uh, variable X is related to variable Y talk about that in our statistics uh, week or there are some differences between variable a, a and B now we don't use letters for variables we use actual um, names for variables so there's either a relationship or an association between the variables or there's some kind of difference between the variables uh, the uh, the good purpose statement has is specific to a population and I'll talk about a population a lot more in our statistics week but a population is uh, a sampling of specific types of individuals that we're doing our study with and when I give you the example of our purpose statement you'll understand what I'm talking about there the purpose statement should be clear and concise another way to think of this it should be very narrow uh, typically young researchers will have very broad uh, topic and broad purpose statements it needs to get very narrow and very specific it's typically only one sentence in length um, and so it's concise and clear other thing is we want to, to remove any kind of bias the um, we don't want to expose our bias on um, in our research again I'm going to give you an example of a purpose statement here at the towards the end of this or at the end of this um, presentation variables uh, since I talked about the association or differences in variables we have to understand what a variable is um, if you remember back in math and we used X and Y and Z uh, to designate something uh, it's the same kind of thing a variable is just a characteristics or attributes that can take on any value or mean anything and, and in this class and in research we typically say it's something we, we identify what that variable is and we like variables that it can be measured or observed um, if it can't be measured or observed we can't do research on it now there are three main types of variables uh, there is the dependent variable also known as DV there's independent variables also known as treatment variables it's also I think called an experiment variable and these are broken down into categorical or moderating variables or extraneous or confounding variables which again I explain all this here in a little bit and then we have finally our control variables the dependent variable is measured it's a thing whatever it is we're going to measure it 
it's typically the outcome of the study, meaning that um, what we're trying to measure, uh, test scores, weight loss, weight gain, uh, blood levels, those type of things. So uh, again, I have I have a video in the in the class, hopefully explaining, also helping you understand what a dependent and independent variable is. Because if you're like me, I kind of get these confused at times too. So the big key one is that the dependent variable is measured. Whereas the independent variable is the thing that we as researchers are manipulating or changing, fixing in some way. We're controlling that thing, whatever that thing is. And some examples of this would be a weight training program uh, or teaching methods. Uh, so it's something that we control as the researcher. Some more independent variables, which are the category, categorical or moderating variables. This is something that can't be changed. Uh, it's just gender, you can't change, well, you can change your gender, but for the research, we're not changing the person's gender, we're not changing their race, and we're not changing their age. It's just, that's what it is. It's category. Uh, it's just there, that's what it is. Now, the extraneous or confounding variables are any variable. We don't know, sometimes we don't know what they are or we can't control them, which may change the results of your study. So, uh, somebody gets sick in the middle of a study that you're doing and you can't control that. It just happens. It's just nothing you can do about that. You really can't control that uh, part of your study. Uh, now there are things called control variables. This is something that, um, again, can have an influence on your study. So what you try to do is you try to control it. And that's why it's called a control variable. You try to uh, set up your study in such a way that that variable, whatever it is, will not influence your research. Now, we typically do this when we, quote, delimit the study to a certain group or age group or something like that. And again, I'm going to talk about delimitations here in just uh, in the next presentation. So it's something, uh, the big idea here is something that you can, you control in your study. Now, here's our example of a purpose statement. Uh, the purpose of this study was to determine if there were any differences in the intensity of training for example, 40% and 70% of the VO2 max on a cardiorespiratory endurance for male college athletes. So our independent variable, it's the thing that we're uh, manipulating or controlling is the intensity of training. And it's we're going to talk about later in the class about getting to different levels of our um, independent variable. In this particular study, there are three different, two different levels. 40% uh, and 70% of the VO2 max. And uh, the reason I give these uh, 30 minute, three times per week for 12 weeks for both groups is that's the delimitations, which I'll talk about later. <clears throat> now our dependent variable is the thing we're measuring. That's the cardiorespiratory endurance. And the specific test we're talking about is a distance a person runs in 12 minutes. So it's the thing we measure is the dependent variable. The thing we controlled or manipulated, the independent variable, was the intensity of our training. Now, the population for this particular um, purpose statement was male college students. Now, we can even get more specific to that. We can go male college basketball student athletes. Uh, we can get even more specific male college NC2A Division I student athletes. So um, this depends on how specific we want to get in our research question or in our purpose statement here. So this is a really good example of a purpose statement. The thing that it is showing, it's asking if there are differences between variables. This is not an association. This is looking for differences between variables. And we're looking for the difference between the intensity of training on the cardiorespiratory endurance. I'm going to continue this purpose statement 
again show you how we develop uh, hypothesis research questions using the exact same purpose statement in part two of our lecture.